Okay, welcome back everyone to uh, the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic at Home event, day two. My name is Sue Diamond um, and I am pleased to uh, introduce our next presenters. Dr. Jeff Rosenbluth is a rehab physician from the University of Utah. And he's joined uh, by his team, uh, Keegan Buffington and Paralympian uh, 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 Tanya Kari and they're going to educate all of us on uh, advancements in skiing for individuals with complex injuries. So I'll turn things over to you, Dr. Rosenbluth. Great. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this is uh, Jeff Rosenbluth, and it's a pleasure to be with you today. Uh, I'm, uh, we have our crew live at Alta, Utah. They're going to be skiing with, with us today and explaining things so we don't have just another Zoom call and another uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, so, I've been at the University of Utah for since 2001. I've worked with this crew that you'll see here today uh, for quite a number of years, and we've been really focusing quite a bit on equipment that really can help with independence and performance for folks with uh, more complex disabilities. Uh, we're really uh, interested in, in uh, working with folks that have uh, high levels of uh, quadriplegia, uh, multiple amputations, neuromuscular disease, anything that makes you significantly weak or asymmetric. Uh, and we've been working for a number of years and we're so happy to be able to share this with you. We've been to the Winter Sports Clinic with some of our equipment before and uh, looking forward to coming back uh, next year after uh, we're through with COVID. So I would like to take a moment to uh, introduce and welcome the rest of my crew. And uh, if we could just go full screen to the rest of the crew, that would be great. Um, we have uh, Keegan Buffington is in our Tetra Ski today. Again, live at Alta saying hi to you guys. And behind the camera, a little hard to see, is Ross and Bergia. So uh, pulling double duty, there we go, as our mechanical engineer uh, and also uh, filming for us today. And we have uh, George Raggetts behind, who's uh, serving on the tether today. And then we have uh, Tanya Kari, who runs our uh, adaptive recreation program. So you guys, uh, thanks so much for being here. And Jennifer, we'll go back to full screen for a second to me. Thank you so much. So uh, I'd like to share with you a little bit about uh, the Tetra ski and also it's, it's uh, sister ski or, or mother ski, I think the, the snow cart, which uh, some of you have uh, not seen before. I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what type of skier would go in the Tetra ski. Um, some of the safety features in case it looks a little, a little uh, crazy out there. Uh, some of the future direction that we're hoping to go and then uh, lots of time for discussion. So um, the crew that's monitoring today is also happy to take your, your chats or questions and, and we can really stop at any time. I really wanted this to be more interactive. Uh, we're going to ski and talk uh, and, and have a good time with that. So um, our program is Trails, Technology, Recreation, Access, Independence, Lifestyle, and Sports. It's our community recreation program, uh, and we've been going for about 20 years. Um, we're lucky enough to have our mothership, the Craig H. Nielsen Rehabilitation Hospital. We just opened a brand new hospital in uh, May of this last year. And uh, a lot of the reason the hospital got built is because a lot of the collaboration and uh, really the energy around adaptive recreation, particularly the kinds of tools that we'll talk about today. Um, so lots of exciting things with the new rehab hospital, uh, fabrication space to build some of the things that you're going to see today. Uh, Ross, our mechanical engineer, works right in the building with us. Um, a whole mobility garage where, you know, some of the equipment that you're seeing here today is really in the hospital, you know, especially with our new injuries, our new spinal cord injuries. Uh, we're able to work on uh, this type of equipment in, in uh, real time in the hospital, put our engineers, our patients, our staff all together in one place working on equipment. Uh, we'll also share with you today some other ways to get better at skiing, especially Tetra skiing. Uh, we have a whole virtual studio where people can do this in a simulator uh, and get quite a bit better uh, before they go out on the hill. Uh, the University of Utah doesn't allow us to sell anything, so they helped us to form a little company, a nonprofit called Tetra Adapt. So if you hear that name Tetra Adapt, that's the company that's trying to bring some of these uh, products and re re remove some of the barriers for folks with complex disabilities. 
Um, you're going to get a chance to see the snow cart a little bit today, but ours key is based on the Tessier snow cart. So this Tessier snow cart is a wide based ski uh, that has a great wide stable platform where instead of uh, using outriggers or fixed uh, outriggers, uh, you actually have direct input uh, through these poles uh, to the skis themselves. Um, it is unbelievable. I think it's uh, one of the biggest you know, new uh, uh, takes on adaptive skiing in quite a long time and really enables a lot of folks with much higher injury levels uh, to ski independently. Uh, even without hand function, we're able to use some of our Tetra gloves and get our hands and arms fixed on those, uh, on those poles and to be able to ski uh, really independently. If you look on the right side of your screen too, you'll see a connector bar. So if you have uh, some type of asymmetry, if you have a, a stroke and you really have one great side and one not so great side, uh, you're still gonna be able to do this independently. Uh, but what happens when you start to lose uh, more uh, function perhaps, and you really don't have an addition to not having great hand function, uh, no great arm or shoulder function as well. Um, and that takes us to the Tetra Ski. And I'd really like to take a moment and maybe we could go Jennifer to our uh, dual screen here where we could have Ross uh, kind of take over uh, looking at the, the Tetra Ski here. In great. So the Tetra Ski is an interesting device. So you can see a, what looks like a complex device. There's a bucket uh, and over by Keegan's right hand, or sorry, left hand is a uh, joystick. The joystick is really set up the same as a uh, power wheelchair. It's the ex exact same setup, really. Uh, and if you look uh, by his, the, his face on the left side, you'll see the sip and puff device too. So this ski is actually electrically steered um, and has both a breath control system and a joystick control system, and they can be used independently or simultaneously. If you tend to be a good a power wheelchair user and pretty good with the with the joystick, uh, it'll work great for you. Uh, and if you don't really have that level of control, you'll be surprised at the level of uh, precision uh, that you can have just with uh, breath control. <clears throat> Um, we'll look, um, Ross, you can take a peek under the hood there if you want, but I have a big picture up here of the electric actuators. So this is a lithium ion battery power device. And what we're doing is replacing those poles that you saw in the snow cart just with these electric actuators. So there's no real cheating or anything like that. You know, we're really just applying power to the ski, setting the ski on the edge and really letting it rip a turn just the same way any skier, uh, particularly a race skier, since these are race skis, uh, can do it too. So you can see a full parallel position here. And um, Keegan, you can kind of mess with the joystick a little bit there too. I'll kind of show them on my screen as well. The um, actuators in, in kind of a full wedge position, and then you could have them in full parallel position too. And it's really infinitely variable in between. Keegan, you want to tell uh, folks just about uh, the seating system and, and how it feels in there? Can you hear me? Uh, I think uh, you're muted, you guys, over there. I can see your mute sign on. There you go. Go ahead, Keegan. Still here? Yeah, we can hear you. Excellent. So the seating can, system right here. Let's go full screen for Keegan. JX2 seating pad underneath me, designed for individuals with uh, for a high level of support. Uh, this seating shell goes up pretty darn high on my back. So I feel very well supported. Behind me, I have a headrest with a collar going over my shoulders, a suboccipital pad, and then halos on the side. So I feel very well supported all the way from my head down to my feet, as well as these pretty infinitely adjustable armrests. We can raise, lower, position really anywhere that's going to be the most uh, beneficial to a skier. And uh, it's snug. I've got a leg covering over me to help keep me a little bit warmer in the wind. And with all these setups, we can really customize them to give someone all the support they need. In addition to that, like the headrest, I would say, is optional. It can be taken in, taken off. It's a bit modular, so some parts we might find beneficial to use, 
other pieces we might remove just to have more freedom of movement. Keegan, can you also talk about um, the level of comfort, how you can be a little bit more uh, really focused on uh, comfort and skin protection in this device as opposed to some of the other devices where you have to be a lot tighter? Absolutely. So the control interface for the Tetra Ski is really all coming from either hand to joystick or mouth to sip and puff. So that allows us with the seating system to not have to have that very tight, rigid ski boot feel. It's designed a lot more for skin, skin protection and comfort. Um, I don't have to be completely square and level in here. Like let's say someone has an obliquity of their hips. We can customize the seating for comfort and body position. And that will not affect the downhill ski performance. Okay, excellent, great. And um, yep. if you want to come back, oh yeah, we could do a dual screen. That would be great, Jennifer. Thank you so much. So uh, you can see there's a little bit of a close up of what, uh, what we're talking about there with Keegan. So some of the, the head control, uh, shoulder control, uh, that is, is there if needed. It's also optional. So whatever gets people the most comfortable and the most stability. Uh, what we found is we, did, we started without these shoulder uh, harnesses and we were just developing so many Gs, such high performance, more than we ever expected that we were getting people kind of mo moving around a little bit. So it's really been helpful, helpful to support people's neck. Uh, you can see the joystick control. And uh, one thing I wanted to show you that will be hard to show on the hill today is the, the custom joysticks that we have uh, working on as well. So we have the ability to print uh, any joystick for any hand, uh, any type of contracture, uh, anything that works best. Uh, what we're finding is that the kind of uh, uh, energy that we're developing in the scheme is really pulling people's arms off the joystick. If you're a good joystick user on your power wheelchair in nor a normal situation, you may be on the ski, but you may find that your arm is getting pulled all over the place. So we can really choose just about anything, including uh, we've worked as well on a, on a uh, magnetic joystick as well. So we actually have the ability to just use a magnet to help orient your arm on hand and keep it centered on the joystick so you have great control and you don't lose control in the middle of the, uh, in the, middle of the run. So I'll talk about this while we're skiing. Hey, uh, Keegan, why don't we go uh, full screen for uh, Keegan and the Tetra Ski and why don't you guys start going? Okay, so we're gonna just get ready to get skiing. And so, and I'll, I'll talk a little go. bit Keegan, here. Um, what you'll see is um, a tether that's there. Uh, the tether, as opposed to some of the devices that you might be used to, uh, is really just uh, there for safety. Uh, it doesn't control the ski. All it can do is serve as a really a, as an emergency brake. Uh, so all 100% of the directional control and the speed control is really uh, Ross. And right now, it looks like he's using the joystick uh, with his with his left arm. So. Um, you'll see uh, in, in uh, the right hand in the picture, or actually they're full screen, uh, Ross, or Ke I'm sorry, Ross, will you go to show the, uh, the remote control that uh, George is holding, please? So you'll see in George's right hand, uh, George actually has a remote control. So the remote control is pretty awesome. So instead of having to do something crazy, like stop the, uh, the ski uh, quickly, uh, which you can do if you need to, uh, but also how do you teach Tetra skiing, right? Uh, with the remote control joystick, you can actually show a student the perfect turn, uh, steer them out of danger if necessary, and just have that extra level of security uh, in addition to uh, the tether that's just there, uh, just in case. Um, it looks like the tether is a little bit taut, but there's no force really being applied to it, whatever. I think George is really just ready uh, if anything happens. And I'll go back. Keegan, do you want to kind of narrate your run down there and what you're doing? Yeah, so right now we're just uh, coming along a cat track up at Alta, Utah. I'm keeping the skis a little bit more parallel to keep my speed going. I'll turn towards Ross a little bit. And all of this control is really coming from this joystick here. And I'll be coming along this flat section. You'll see me make a pretty big left turn where it gets steeper. And I'll utilize a bit tighter turn radius and more of a wedge position of the skis.
Okay, we're coming up to the end of the cat track. And I'm gonna just swing this around, make a big old left turn. And come back into a right turn. And then back over to the left and to the right again. And just like any skier, I'm using turn size and turn shape to manage my speed and go at the pace that I desire. And Keegan, I think it'd be helpful for people to know that uh, George is not doing anything, that 100% of that control is coming from you and the joystick and the shape of your turn. Is that right? That's absolutely right. George is back there. He's able to intervene in any emergency situation. However, George and I, we've, uh, we've been skiing the Tetra ski together for a while. So he's really just hands off, following behind me. For newer uh, skiers that don't quite have the skills developed yet, George might walk them through some training exercises, some drills or demos. But right here, I'm just skiing and George is just right behind me. I would say as an instructor, one of my favorite parts of skiing with the Tatra ski is getting someone trained up to where they really know what skills they're do, working on or have developed. We get to the top of the chairlift and they ask, where should I go? And I got to just say, you know, wherever you want, ski it, make the turns how, where you want, you know, when to pick up speed, when to dial it back. And I'm just getting to the point with a, a skier to where I'm not giving any input. We don't need to give any turn direction or anything like that. We're just out skiing. Keegan, do you want to hold just before the next uh, knoll there? And I'm going to go on with a couple of yeah. things here. Would that be okay? Yep, let me just turn to a stop here. Okay. And Jennifer, if you want to go back uh, towards my uh, slides, that would be great. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, you guys. That was awesome. Um, I wanted to kind of share with you, uh, this is kind of a, a big powder day, uh, Keegan and myself out there with uh, some students, but uh, really the tether is, again, uh, we, we call it detethering or E, like emergency tether or anti-tether. It's the exact opposite, and it's interesting as we're working with new instructors um, because the tether typically has uh, more of a function in terms of turning, uh, shaping the turn, uh, and slowing the skier. And so we really just uh, leave it in the off position unless absolutely necessary and really have to retrain instructors to, um, to not do anything with the tether. All you can do is slow someone down or mess them up. Um, I also wanted to show you a quick video of the uh, snow cart and you'll kind of get a sense of the exact same turns because it really is the exact same ski without the electric actuators. So um, there aren't uh, as many of these as I wish there were in the country, but if you do have some shoulder function, some upper extremity function um, in the biceps, uh, you don't have to have hand function, you do not have to have tricep function, uh, you'd be able to ski this uh, as well as the tetra ski uh, independently with the same type of uh, tether situation as well. Um, also remember we can have that connector bar, and if you have one arm that's better than the other, you can use both arms together to, to uh, make and uh, shape the turn. Um, and uh, I actually don't have to show you this video because we're doing things live. Uh, but um, as you can see, you know, Keegan uh, does not have a disability. I should have mentioned that right off the bat. He's really, he's uh, our lead instructor. Uh, the gentleman that you see here has a C4 uh, level of spinal cord injury. He is doing the breath control, which Keegan will demonstrate for you when I get back to him. So little tiny bits of air puffing out continuously or little bits at a time or sipping in is doing all of that precise control um, on this run at uh, Deer Valley a couple of years ago. Um, and I'll just show you real quick, uh, that doesn't apply to everyone, but this, uh, th this kid just had really one lesson and just started just completely ripping turns as fast as you want, really. Um, the actuators work instantaneously. Uh, and we'll, we'll go from age four to age 84. Uh, and this, this kid is age four years old. Uh, and just so Matt, you know- Dr. Rosenblatt, 
Yes. Uh, this is Diamond. We had a couple of questions in the chat related to the tether, if um, you want. Um, yes. One was, uh, can someone learn to ski the tetra completely independently without the tether, or is it always recommended start with the tether for that emergency break? Yeah, yeah. Um, so great question. There's only one reason that, the, well, there's a couple reasons. The main reason that the tether is there is that the skis are so wide based that if you went too fast, you would never crash. You would really stay upright and just pick up speed. And so we are worried, we have never had it happen, but if there was a catastrophic failure of the electronics, we'd like to be able to know that someone can stop. If we're in a powder field where the consequences of being able to um, uh, get a little out of control because it turns into flat, we can take the tether off. It's been our habit to keep it on there and to really train everyone uh, to make sure that they don't use it at all. Okay, so then the other question was, if you didn't use a tether, could you ski untethered with a buddy skier? Based on your first response, I'm thinking that's probably not the way you would recommend doing it. I, I don't think it's a, a great idea. Um, again, I think if anyone gets to try it, they'll realize that nothing is happening back there. The, the ski instructor is just cruising and having a good time and just ready for a potential emergency. Um, we, uh, you know, Ross, our engineer who's filming right now, has done it many times without the tether, uh, has, has a lot of confidence in the system. We just, we just really, as, we're, as a newer device and a newer program, we would hate for something bad to happen. And then are you going to be able, going to be showing us um, how uh, the, uh, the Tetra ski is loaded onto the ski lift or? Yes. Uh, as a bootloader, yep. I think Dan and I have a question. I seem to recall it was a fairly independent load. Yes, we're going to show right. you the actual, we're actually going to take these guys all the way down to the chairlift and do, and do a, a load for you. Kai, will you get that? Uh, we'll do a load for you. And then I have a few pictures of that load as well. Um, I am gonna also show you um, uh, a little bit more of the skiing. So um, actually the, it is it is submersible. Thank you. <laughs> That's it from the chair. Uh, we've, we've had a, I'm sorry, I just had a little disruption here, but we had a huge powder day Thank the you. other day. And so we got this basically completely uh, under the snow. Uh, you can see that, um, so that was a really great day. We're going to go back to Keegan, and I uh, wanted Keegan to show you guys a little bit. What's that? Yeah, we're good. Okay. I did want to show you guys um, the, uh, the sip and puff now. So if we go back to Keegan, Keegan's on a steeper section of the run right now, and we're going to have him do the entire rest of this uh, run all with uh, mouth control. Okay, now it's good. Okay, let's ski. Let's see, are we gonna, I think we have to switch back there. Oh, perfect, thank you. Keegan, you wanna walk us through it? Oh, I guess you can't, you're breathing. <laughs> well, I can take some breaks here and there. <laughs> Just do a mill, pass and mill sips. So here we're coming to a flatter section. So we got some more parallel skis. And we're gonna come up to a steeper section. So we'll increase wedge size. Great, that's awesome. Keegan, I'm gonna let you guys keep skiing um, all the way, uh, let's see, are you down there already? Yeah, why don't you guys, yep. um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk through this, why don't you guys get ready to load and we'll, we'll keep on you guys um, so that we can uh, just load it right up and show everyone. I'm sure people are super interested. I'll talk a little bit through this as well. Um, 
and I have a couple of pictures a little bit down the road here, but um, there's a little pin uh, that uh, you'll see George that he's going to undo on the left side. The pin keeps the ski uh, connected, uh, the, the part of the ski that Keegan is sitting in, uh, to the lower part of the ski. Um, there's also a setting on the, uh, the actual uh, remote control to actually put those skis into a parallel position where both the instructor and the skier really can't turn them at all. Uh, this is so that there's no real problems at all when you're loading or unloading the lift, so it's really safe. Uh, we had to learn that the hard way, of course, <laughs> by messing up on the load uh, a few times before. Um, you can actually put the ski into the loading position in the lift line and then push through that way. Or you can actually just go all the way up to the lift and just pull up at the last minute onto the, onto the uh, chair. We uh, have a 110-pound gas strut that's on uh, the ski which assists uh, the, the instructor. So it's really the weight of the skier minus 110 pounds. And usually two people are loading the ski. So it's really not uh, too much of an effort, even for someone who's a little bit larger. And we do go up to about uh, 250 pounds. Um, and uh, you'll see too, one of the things that we're working on, I uh, have in a future slide too though, is an, a third electric actuator. The third electric actuator would actually help um, to uh, put it in the loading position. So there would essentially be no lifting uh, whatsoever. And that's both for the Tetra ski and uh, the snow cart. And so why don't we, um, we'll kind of follow these guys through the line and we'll look at a real, a real load. So really just the main instructor uh, pulls up. Uh, we are able to do one instructor depending on um, how heavy they are. And it's just a gas strut up, strut up and load. It just sits on the, on the chair really nicely. And um, we'll try to come back to them when they get to the top so that we can look at uh, the offload uh, as well. Keegan, why don't you interrupt and bug me when you're getting near the top? Um, here you go. Here's just a nicer picture. I think we're all back on me, uh, Jennifer. Yep, thank you. Um, and uh, you can see how easy it is to put it in the loading position even before you get to the chairlift. So if you're a solo instructor, you can actually lift, leave it like this and push through the lift line like this as well. Um, from the front, it just sits so beautifully on the chair. Uh, one thing I wanted to share with you while they're taking a, a chairlift up um, is the fact that we've done a lot of work on the simulator, right? We don't unfortunately have winter year round. I'd like to have it year round, but we've got four good months of winter uh, and the rest of the time we're just, th I'm just thinking about winter. So uh, the nice thing is we are playing with a simulator as well now. Uh, so we have the Tetra Ski simulator where you choose a sip and puff device or joystick device. You can set this up however you would like. Um, choose whether you sip or you puff or right or left. You can customize your control interface. And then we actually have used Google Earth to map the runs that you will ski in real life. And then we've got you uh, skiing. And so you get a little idea with the skis moving back and forth, um, what your skis are doing underneath you since that's hard to see. Um, in the simulator, you, you see kind of the percent grade about how fast you're going. And it really uh, is very similar it uh, doesn't look all that realistic maybe here. And I'll show you a little bit more of a realistic simulator. This was one of our early ones. Um, I, I showed you earlier one of the rooms that we have to test the simulator. So this is not the ski simulator, but we have a whole room just filled with screens uh, where we actually practice the simulator and some virtual reality work as well. Um, we actually have a simulator uh, for the instructors as well. So we actually have a simulator of the instructor tethering. So the instructor can learn how to um, tether uh, the right way, which does take some practice to go from a more dependent tethering to a hands-off tethering technique. Um, terrain selection, you can choose the run that you want, which again is based on the run in real life. Um, the run was the run that you just saw Keegan and those guys uh, take. You can choose icy conditions, powdery conditions, clear fog, snowing to really make the experience a lot more accurate. We even have an artificial intelligence where you can actually ski with another skier or your instructor can be in a Tetra ski in the virtual situation ahead of you and you can follow and check that out. I'll show you here for a second. Uh, we'll let the simulator play just a little bit and again, choose the run. Uh, this time we have gates. 
and you'll see a little bit more realism here in the simulator. And you'll actually have another Tetra ski to kind of follow there. Uh, and there's some instructions about turning left and turning right and trying to help you turn around the gates in the best way. Um, and we've gone even bigger than that. <laughs> we, we actually have just a sip and puff simulator, not even a ski simulator, but this is an arcade where you really just practice the sip and puff. Even if you're decent with a sip and puff on a power chair or you've never done one before, it really does require a teeny bit of practice. And so if you can play these games by moving the hockey puck, say left and right, or operating a pinball machine, you know, all of those things are, um, are, are possible in this game. And we're finding that people who do practice are really much better when they get out on, on the ski. Um, I'm looking at the chairlift. You guys are a little bit. We have a few more minutes. I can kind of see you guys up there. Um, I wanted to show you also, um, this is someone uh, who gave me permission to use the video, but she actually has a high level of spinal cord injury. In fact, you can see the ventilator right there. So this is two weeks after her injury. Uh, and with that mobility garage I showed you earlier, we're able to bring the skis inside. We're able to play on the simulator and practice. Uh, and we're able to do this safely in kind of a hospital setting um, really so early on uh, and play with these control systems. Um, we are planning for the future, a future that's uh, safe. Uh, we have really only rarely rolled uh, one of these over. I, I'd say really just uh, once or twice and mostly uh, in practice when we've been practicing. Um, we've been playing with some, uh, you guys are familiar probably with some of the outriggers. These outriggers are different. They don't really alter performance at all, but should the ski start to tip over, it may be able, it, it's likely able to uh, write it um, again. And I'll show you just real quick a little video. So we're actually simulating falls in models and really looking at how to optimize uh, the entire system to minimize the falls. Um, one of the things that we've been doing as well is we've been putting uh, small weights on the outside of the ski for heavier skiers. It really prevents that from lifting at all. And we are able to ski very aggressively with high performance on the slope, off the slope, in the trees, uh, and feel very confident uh, with that. Um, you've seen the sip and puff device before. Um, it's a single straw, a single sip and puff. Uh, we are looking at dual sip and puffs. You can imagine almost a harmonica where you have a lot of different openings and you can control some, some more. Uh, and Keegan hadn't quite explained uh, before, but we uh, are able to control uh, things not just left and right, but the different modes and the different positions of the skis as they work together in different wedge shapes. Uh, and I see these guys coming up. I'm gonna actually switch over. Why don't we switch over to Keegan right now, or the Tetra Ski, and we'll go full Tetra Ski. And Keegan, why don't you kind of walk everyone through the uh, offload up here? I think uh, they're muted. I think uh, the Tetra ski is still muted from what I can tell here. I've asked them to unmute Jeff. They may not have a signal yet. I oh yeah, uh, Keegan, those, you guys, do you want to unmute? Thank you. There you go. So we're coming okay. up to the unload station here. George is going to count down three, two, one, off, and we'll just slide right off the chair. Here we go. And nice and easy, we get off the chairlift. We'll just turn to a stop here and get ready for our ski rundown. We'll take and, the ski out of chairlift mode. And Keegan, while you're there, will you explain some of the nuance of the sip and puff in terms of not just left and right control, um, but also um, how we can control the, uh, the mode change and the shape of the wedge as well? Yeah, so with the sip and puff control, uh, we can utilize some different mode change. I think unmuted. you guys, oh, there you go. You're, you're, okay. you're unmuted so now. The instructor, yep. With the instructor remote can change from wedge position one, two, three, or four, with one being the most parallel 
used for like cloud track style positions up to a mode position four, which is gonna be a deeper wedge, tighter turn radius. And depending on the terrain, the speed, the desired outcome really, we'll cycle through those modes while skiing. We are working, as Jeff said, on either a dual sip and puff mechanism for even the greater control, or using utilizing like double sips, double puffs to change that mode. So the skier can just do all of that on their own. Great, Keegan. I'll take over for just a second. I think if we can go back to um, my slide for a moment, that would be great. I do want to show you really what we're heading to for uh, next is we certainly have the sip and puff and the joystick control system. Uh, but what, what if we could do better? What if we could do more? Uh, and what you're seeing in this slide are some surface electrodes that are placed over muscles on this gentleman's body that still work pretty well. Um, he's a C4 injury level. Uh, has a C4 injury level, so uh, uh, the shoulders, necks, neck were great. So these electrodes are just recording his muscle signals. So he is using just a little bit of muscle activity in the neck to control a virtual hand on the screen there. What we're doing is testing this a little bit. What we'd like to do is actually change that to go back and control some of our sports equipment. So you can imagine um, skiing and just with subtle movements of your muscles around your neck and shoulders, doing all those same things that, cut, that required breath control before. Um, and that really is looking very promising. Um, I will tell you also that we're, we, we have built um, quite a few skis now. Uh, I think there's eight or nine out there. Uh, we have uh, one on the East Coast. Uh, we have one uh, in, the, in the Rockies, the West Coast of Tahoe. We have a few. We have one at, in Canada, one going to France. Uh, and we are hoping to work uh, towards a, uh, a more competitive future where perhaps a Tetra ski is, a, is really a, a challenge and a sport all of its own. Um, we are working on some other exciting things <laughs> like a power assist cross-country ski. Um, no one's in it yet because it's still very early and testy. We couldn't get anyone to get in there yet, um, but it'll be safe by the time we do it. Um, so that's one of the next sports that's, uh, that's coming up. And we are looking at a, a boat that we're launching this summer, the Tetra Watercraft, which has the same control systems that you're seeing um, uh, to control the rudder, the sail control, and even electric power for when there's no wind. So... I'm, I'm gonna stop. I'd love to go back to Keegan for a moment. I think we just have a few more minutes and I'm gonna have Keegan uh, exclusively uh, start to ski. So why don't you guys take a run and we'll stay on you guys for a little bit here. Okay, we'll start skiing. And I think uh, Jennifer or any of you other guys, if there's some other, this would be a good time. We can take a few questions. Keegan can take some questions live or I'm happy to as well. So Dr. Rosenbluth, one question we have is, do you do training for instructors and therapists um, uh, using the simulator? We, uh, the simulator has just gotten to the point now where I think that we will. It'll be incorporated in all the next trainings. The trainings for instructors it require that an instructor is already an expert instructor with uh, mono and or bisky, has some tethering experience, and then is willing to do a four-day training with us, which we've been able to do either once or uh, twice a year. Um, and we have done it at Ski Spectacular in the past, and we have done one at uh, Mount Hood in the summer uh, as well with Beth Fox. Great, great. And then the only other from the um, uh, from the chat are just a lot of like spring skiing, love it, fantastic work. This is so cool. I will say you made that load look crazy easy. So <laughs> yeah, I, it was. The mountain. These guys are obviously really experienced, but the the load, you know, we've all loaded different devices, and this is definitely an easier device to load. And I think we'll be happy, hopefully, next year to share with folks the um, the powered actuator, so we really could take a load off literally the um, the instructors and make things a little safer for everyone. And then, of course, the student would actually have control over that, so they'd put themselves in the load position and really get as as close to total independence uh, as we can. Um, so yeah, so I think now we have uh, so many pieces of equipment from uh, the monoski and the, the, the various bi-skis, the snow cart and the tetra ski, 
that we really just have, I think, an unprecedented level of, of, of independence, but not just independence. It's really at a high level of performance. And you saw the one uh, ski that was, you know, really under the snow. I mean, we are going out on powder days with huge skis. You know, we have race slalom skis, and we're looking forward to uh, working on a race course with the ski, too, and, and get into some competition uh, for next year. Keegan, you look like you're having a good time. Are you okay over there? Oh, this is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. We're just cruising down. It's a nice sunny day. <laughs> wonderful snow. Hey, Jeff, we did have a question. What's the average learning time to be proficient with the Tetra ski? Yeah, that's what's so fun also is, is it takes a while, I would say, to be really proficient, the same as regular skiing. You know, it's not like you get in here and you go left and right on the joystick. There's so much nuance um, and kind of infinite control of how you control those skis and turn and read the terrain that I would say it is exactly the same. If you're a beginner skier and you're in the Tetra ski, it's the same learning curve. Um, and also for the more intermediate and advanced skier, there's enough nuance con and control in it uh, that I think it'll be weeks and even seasons, you know, before you feel like you are really at, at the top of your game. Great. I think we just have a few more minutes. Um, Keegan, do you have a few other words? Otherwise, I can um, wrap things up. You know, I just... Uh want to say with the extension of what you said of what's so unique about the Tetris is it's well whether I should say unique or non-unique like any other style of skiing it's all turn size turn shape for that speed control and so with this joystick I might be going fully left or fully right forward back or all that infinite combination in between to have the skis make that performance that I'm wanting them to. Yeah, that looks great. Awesome. Well, uh, Keegan and the trails crew, I want to thank you guys uh, so much for the effort of getting out there. I think it was worth it. I hope you guys who are watching uh, think so as well. And uh, Jennifer, I'll wrap up if you want to come back to me, please. Thank you so much. So we are, uh, we are super uh, excited to share this with you. I was super excited, uh, not that I wanted to do virtual, but I'm really happy that maybe with the virtual experience that we'll reach some more folks that really hadn't made it out to the Winter Sports Clinic because they weren't sure there was something that they would enjoy. Um, I think if you're even remotely thinking about it, you should do it because uh, we, we're having a lot of fun uh, testing this. It's ready for prime time. Uh, we'll bring a bunch of them if we're, uh, well, when we're invited, I hope for uh, next year, uh, and we're hoping to really start to get involved with the Summer Sports Clinic too and the Tetra Watercraft. We're very interested in your ideas. We're very interested in your feedback. Uh, I have a couple of our websites here. Tetra Adapt is, you know, really talks a lot about the ski and the development and the trails, the utrails.us. Uh, you can find more information about our adaptive sports program and how you can ski with us here in Utah. But also, again, we have partners uh, that are offering uh, discounted free lessons all over the United States uh, with more every year. So with that, I will thank, uh, I will thank everyone for hosting us. Uh, thank the audience for putting up with our uh, technology uh, demonstration. I hope, hope it worked well for you. And I'll turn this back over uh, to our hosts to see if there's any other questions and to wrap things up. So. Yeah, uh, th thank you. We had just a couple of questions. One, you should know, Teresa said that she, we will have several of these at the 2022 event, so you're in. Um, oh, good. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, some questions about how to get in touch with you. And um, uh, let's see, there was one about where... Uh, I I got How long it. does a battery charge last, Jeff? Yeah, battery charge, yeah. Yeah, great question. So even on the coldest days, which is zero degrees, we have skied from nine to four with plenty of reserve. Uh, so we have, we can ski all day long without a break uh, with good battery. The battery is just a couple of hours. It's two lithium ion batteries that are underneath the seat. Okay. And then the other one was, um, do you have a list of resorts adaptive organizations where the Tetris skis are around the countries that would that be on your website? 
Yes, we have that information on the website. And so there's ways to get in touch with us. And we do look at that regularly. So either Tetradapt or U-Trails, they really connect to each other. We'll let you know where the skis are and where the, when they're coming. Uh, we'll try to uh, announce that and keep the site really active. Okay, awesome. Well, we, we I know I learned a lot. I think everyone did and just really want to thank you and your team. Um, for uh, being with us today. And we look forward to seeing you in person in 2022 at the event. Thank you. That sounds good. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Take care. Okay, sure. Bye-bye. All right, bye.